Clinical features of any of the following, Raynaud's phenomenon, inflammatory arthritis, esophageal dysmotility, interstitial lung disease, all of these can present as signs and symptoms of mixed connective tissue disease. Now, in order to qualify and have mixed connective tissue disease, there are two criteria you must fulfill. One is you have to have a positive anti-U1 RNP antibody, specifically the 70 KD protein, and you have to have two of the following diagnosed autoimmune disorders. So you have to have two, either lupus, autoimmune myositis, or systemic sclerosis. So two of the following autoimmune disorders and the positive anti-U1 RNP. And because there's such a large breadth of how mixed connective tissue disease presents, it makes sense that there is a large array of different treatments. We can use specifically the biologics. So you can use hydroxychloroquine. If there's lung and kidney involvement, then you want to switch for something like cyclophosphamide. So one thing I want to highlight about mixed connective tissue disease is the largest all-cause mortality rate in mixed connective tissue disease is actually due to pulmonary arterial hypertension, um, flares, and overt, like profound right ventricular heart failure. And that makes sense, right, because it affects that pulmonary arterial hypertension or that group one. Remember, when we are screening for, you know, different types of pulmonary hypertension, you screen with an echo, you confirm what the right heart cap. So uh, there's a video, I'll link it up to the top right here um, if you want to review the different classifications and treatments. But for our purpose, I want you to recognize that, um, you know, with that high mortality rate of pulmonary arterial hypertension in the setting of patients with mixed connective tissue disease, they will, they will most likely present with some sort of um, right heart strain or um, like a pulmonary arterial hypertension flare. So the good news is, though, is because it's a group one, we actually have medications to treat pulmonary arterial hypertension. Those are going to be your epoprostenols or your bocentins. Those are the prostacyclin agonists, and you can also use endothelian receptor antagonists. Now, just to recap, again, you target the pulmonary arterial hypertension with these medications on the right side of the screen here, but for the other... Um, factors and, and issues with the interstitial lung disease, the kidney involvement, those are going to be when you start using the biologics, things like hydroxychloroquine, um, or you might opt for cyclophosphamide for overall mixed connective tissue disease treatment. They need to be plugged in with a rheumatologist, and that's pretty much it for this video, guys. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe to the video. It helps me keep the lights on, essentially, and I love what I do. I love making these videos, so like and subscribe if you want more videos and thank you so much for your time.